I work with a great staff to study the population of New York City for all kinds of different applications. I spend a great deal of time understanding how the city and its neighborhoods change. The dynamism that characterizes the city's neighborhoods has a demographic imprint that we study. Uh, we study births, deaths, people coming, people going. Uh, we try to understand how this changes the composition of the city's neighborhoods. All of this is vital to making good decisions. Every day I am asked, who is in this neighborhood? What is the population of that neighborhood? How is this neighborhood changing? How is that neighborhood changing? By school construction people, by the Department of Education, by all kinds of different agencies. Agencies that look to the data for guidance on who is where, and guidance on how to allocate the services, guidance on how to uh, look forward. Growth early in this decade was in the stratosphere, uh, demographically speaking. Uh, the, each year from 10 to 11, 11 to 12, after the Great Recession, um, we experienced growth uh, that the likes of which um, I haven't seen in a very long time. We were growing those years by between 70 and 80,000 people a year. A lot of it was fueled by young people coming in, highly educated young people from the rest of the country. It kind of changed the calculus a little bit. The dynamic changed. We historically have gotten about half of our inflow from immigration. That was down to about a third. Two thirds of the people coming in at that time were from the rest of the nation. So the population has soared, and now it's flattening out a bit, as we expect. It is impossible in the categories provided in the census to describe New York. New York goes beyond any of the categories that would ever be created on a census form. So we're starting in a position that's quite difficult. Look at where we are. Uh, we're in the center of the world. I, I know parochial, I know that. I am lived in New York all my life. But in many ways, you can demonstrate you're the center of the world by having the world encapsulated in your data. I think that the new data that we're going to get of the detailed race and Hispanic origin for the entire population, remember the census is a count of everyone, Okay, um, I think it's going to show that the, di the diversity of the city in a way that we've been unable to chronicle in the past. I think we're going to see um, in those responses under white, under black, um, people uh, coming out and saying that uh, they want to be um, they want to be counted and they want to register who they are uh, in, in, and having a full count of the population along those lines can be very powerful. Powerful to demonstrate diversity and educate people about our diversity and replace some of the fear that has become prevalent with an appreciation for who we are. That's m always my hope. It's important to remember that despite how difficult the current period is uh, regarding immigration rhetoric, this is hardly the first time that New York has seen this kind of situation. New York is a resilient city in so many ways. And one of the ways uh, that New York has demonstrated its resilience as always acting as a magnet for immigrants. And perhaps more so now, because we are an immigrant-friendly city. We want immigrants. We engage immigrants. We have special, all kinds of special things that we do to make immigrants feel welcome here, because we know that those immigrants uh, are going to become the next New Yorkers. And the more incorporated they are into the fabric of the city, uh, the more they are above board, so to speak, the more that they are 
um, out there working and out there participating civically in their communities, the greater the city is going to be. And that has been our secret formula for very, very long time. And now, with, with hostility in other places, um, perhaps New York, because of our welcome and the nature of, 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 our, um, of our attitude towards immigrants, could perhaps be a bastion even more so than in the past. Understanding the dynamics of a city that has a few hundred different ethnic, language, racial, ancestry groups, and understanding how to encapsulate that into a description of what our neighborhoods are like, how they're changing. Um, for example, it's important to know that uh, to try to provide city uh, provide people with access to services we're very big on this on the idea that we want to engage people we want to offer services to people to incorporate them into the city's fabric because the more we incorporate especially our newcomers our domestic migrants into the city's fabric the better off the city's going to be uh, for, for the long haul. It's what makes us special, our ability to take all these people from all over the world, from all over the nation, and somehow they become New Yorkers, and we incorporate them into our, our labor force, we incorporate them civically into our communities, and what we end up with is a special kind of chemical demographic reaction of sorts that produces what we call New York City. And it's truly a situation where the total is greater than the sum of the parts. And I get to describe that, and I get to study that. So I am very, very lucky. <laughs>